What's up guys, hope you are safe. I'm actually pretty happy because this movie marks my 800 watched movie. It's quite a bit of a celebration and it actually came during a special event movie which I'm really happy about because I love the special events. In case you haven't watched any of my other special event videos, first of all, what are you waiting for? It's an event where I watch one movie per week that has a certain topic. This month is movies that are set in 2020 but not made in 2020. By the by, I'm Valentin Halpert, the movie guy, and this is my review for A Quiet Place. The world in this movie is not how we know it to be. It is dominated by some creatures that react to sounds. If you make a significant sound, you're gonna attract them and they are going to hunt you. The story follows the Abbots, a family that is still trying to survive in this world. One day, as they scavenge through a drugstore, Bo, one of their sons, finds a toy. His father, Lee, does not let him take that toy because it will make too much noise. His deaf sister, Reagan, lets him have the toy, which leads to Bo activating it and dying. Now, a year later, the family is still alive and surviving, with one more member on the way. Let's start with the negatives, like usual, and there are not a lot of them. I enjoyed this movie, it's quite good, but throughout it I kept asking myself, so what? What is the point of it? Because for the largest part of it, only the world is explored like he's trying to ease us in, but the movie is pretty short at an hour and 30 minutes. It feels like it doesn't have an end game. And another negative, which is a little bit nitpicking, how do any of these people survive? Any little bit of noise can trigger these monsters. What if you snore at night or what happens when you flush the toilet? It's an interesting gimmick and they did a pretty good job of covering up a lot of questions about noise, we'll get to that later, but there are still some loose ends. On to the positives now, this movie doesn't have that much dialogue and the dialogue that is present is made through sign language, so they don't make noise. That leaves the opportunity for the music to take over. And if the music is not engaging, it can make the movie boring. And the music actually creates a lot of tension and sometimes sorrowness. It fits the scenes perfectly. Plus, the sounds of the wind or footsteps are really welcome considering that you don't really hear that much in the movie. I like seeing what they use to not make sounds during their routine. They walk barefoot, they talk through sign language like I've already said. The most interesting part for me was that they eat out of leaves, not plates. The monsters look really good. They reminded me of the monsters from Dead Space. The first scene that they appear in, the one where they kill Bo, they show just how ruthless and fast they are. I, and I also like the fact that they find the creature's weakness organically, it doesn't feel like it's convenient. Reagan was my favorite character, she is deaf and her father keeps trying to make her a hearing aid and she knows that none of them are going to work. She also carries the death of her brother Bo on her shoulders, she was the one that gave him the toy that would make enough noise to get him killed by the monsters. She is smart, tough, she wants to learn how to handle herself, but it's Lee who doesn't want to teach her. The movie creates some great tension. I was on the edge of my seat when Evelyn started having contraptions and she was about to give birth, but one of the creatures was in the house waiting for a little sound to be made. Emily Blunt was fantastic in the scene and I was really intrigued as to what will happen next. In terms of the 2020 that is portrayed in this movie, it's definitely worse than the 2020 that we are currently living in. A post-apocalyptic scenery, monsters they hunt by sound, they are really hard to kill, it's a pretty rough way to live. But there are still 6 months until the end of the year so let's not rule out the possibility of this happening because this year seems to be cursed. It's that time where I'm about to drop some knowledge. Actress Millicent Simmons, who plays Reagan, the deaf daughter, is actually deaf in real life as well because of a medication overdose. John Krasinski and Emily Blunt are a married couple in this movie and in real life as well and it is actually the first time that they make a movie alongside one another. And the opening sequence was the final sequence made because John Krasinski had to shave off his beard for it. The cast needed, needed to be able to act with their facial expressions and body language, not charisma because, as I've already said, there is limited dialogue. I think they made the right casting choice here, Emily Blunt is really good, I don't think I've watched a movie from her that I didn't like. John Krasinski is also brilliant, I know him from The Office but I never thought that he actually has acting chops. He is also the director so big big ups for him, Millicent Simmons plays Reagan and she also impressed me. You could always read the frustration from her face. My favorite scene is the dance sequence between Lee and Evelyn. 
Not only because it's pretty romantic and I'm a sucker for romance, but because of the music. They are dancing and then Evelyn takes out one of her headphones and puts it in his ear. When it gets closer, you start hearing the music louder and louder until it was at maximum. It felt like that scene with the girl with the red coat from Schindler's List. I feel that this is a good movie, but it would have made for an amazing TV show. I think it needed a bit more runtime and the small screen would have provided that. I do think that this movie is a bit overrated. I mean it's good, don't get me wrong, I, I enjoy myself, but I heard a lot of people hyping it up and it's not as good as they say. It has a very original gimmick and I think that that's what propelled this movie so far up. For my alternative pick, it's a little difficult to pick a movie like this because it is, as I said, unique, but I'm going with Hush. It's got that tension that A Quiet Place has, it's more of a horror film, it features another deaf character and again, limited dialogue. So my rating for A Quiet Place is 3.5 stars.